Hello everyone, this is Marcy from The Scribbled Word. Welcome to my channel. Today I have a project to share with you. Um, just kind of a craft with me video where I am going to be using this antique book to make a binder. So here I'm showing you some of the things I'm going to be using for this project. This is a binder mechanism that is a six ring with which is also an A5 size. And then this here is the screw that I am going to be using to attach the mechanism to the spine of the book, which you'll see me do in a little while. So I'm just gonna put those aside for now. And here I'm gonna show you, I've actually already detached the cover, but um, basically I just used a X-Acto knife, just like this one and ran it along the side of the book where the, where the end papers are. And that detached fairly easily, depending on how old your book is. It, you know, it can take, can be more difficult sometimes, but um, the main thing is to try not to pierce the spine when you're detaching it. And so then I just removed the book block as you can see, and I'm trying to find something that I can use for the spine and um, for the section where I will attach that binder mechanism. So this book, um, The Golden Treasury of Children's Literature, I had and I've been using it in some of my journals and I didn't want to use the cover for anything else, so I decided I would use that it's a pretty hefty piece of chipboard, so in retrospect, I probably would have used something a little bit thinner because it was almost too thick for the screw to go through it and the fabric and everything, but it worked out fine. So here I'm just measuring the size of my book so that I can cut that to the right size. So you can hear it's just see that it's just over nine inches which this book was the perfect size for that A5 size binder mechanism, which is what I wanted to use. Since I have an A5 size punch that would work with that. And so I'm just measuring this out. I like to make two marks when I do any measurements because that way it helps to two to three. Sometimes, a lot of times I'll do three marks because I tend to mismeasure things. <laughs> But, um, so here I'm measuring the width of the spine because I am going to leave the width the same and you'll see why as the project progresses. So you can see it's about a two inch, about a two inch spine that I'm going to be doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and measure that out again. So I just wanted to say sorry about the lighting in this video. I know there's kind of a glare on, um, that's reflecting on the shiny surfaces of the book, but um, I tried filming in a different location because I thought the lighting might be a little bit better, but it ended up being a bit harsher. So hopefully that doesn't bother you too much. Um, so as I'm measuring here, um, I thought I might talk to you guys a little bit about what I'm planning to use this binder for. So one of the projects that I'm doing with my kids over the summer is we are working on memorization. And so we're going to be memorizing some Bible verses and also some poems and quotes and different things like that. And I really feel like even just for myself that it was something I wanted to work on doing more memorizing of scriptures and poetry and things like that because I really feel that especially I don't know if you guys feel this way at all but I feel like with um, the way that we use our technology and how busy our lives are we are almost training our brains to forget things and um, we don't have to remember anything really anymore because we can just look it up on our phones so I thought this would be a good exercise for myself and for my kids 
and I know that memorization is really good for the brain and for brain development and um, so we are going to be doing that this summer we've already started so I am excited about that we've already started the project so and the kids are doing well so far with their memorizing so here you can see I've detached the spine from the two sides of the cover and I did this mainly because this is a very old book and I didn't trust that it was going to stay intact for a long time to come so I wanted to make it a little more secure and sturdy so this fabric that you see is what I chose to use to help attach the new spine to these two side pieces and so I'm just going to measure the height of the book cover and then I'm going to cut that to size so you'll see me just put a little snip in it and then I just tear the fabric there and it leaves a nice frayed edge which will be peeking out from behind the cover but if you don't want that then you can you know cut it smaller so that it doesn't peek out from behind your book cover if you'd like so here you can see that it's going to cover the spine and then it'll go also onto the book page a little over an inch on each side I believe so but the next thing that I want to do is cover this spine with the same fabric to make it look a little nicer so that we don't see the old images that were on the previous cover that I made the spine from. So I'm just doing the same thing. I'm tearing this fabric to size and then I'm going to be gluing the spine onto the fabric and wrapping that. So you'll see me do that here in a minute. So hopefully I am clear with all of my instructions and explaining of how I'm doing this. It's something that I was just kind of figuring out as I went along because this is the first time I've made this kind of journal where I attached you know, the binder mechanism myself and did all of that um, just using an old book cover. So. I was sort of figuring it out as I went along. I'm sure there's other methods out there um, for doing this, but this is what worked for me. So I thought I would share it with you guys in case someone would like to try doing something like this. So once I have it about the size that I want, I'm using my Fabri-Tec adhesive and I'm going to glue this down to the fabric. And even though this was pretty thick fabric because it was a pretty loose weave, um, it did the glue did seep through it, so you can see some of that, which you'll notice here in a minute. Um, so if that does bother you, you may want to try spreading out your glue and making sure it's nice and even before attaching it, or doing like a test run to see if it's going to seep through the fabric that you're using before you do it but most of this does get covered up so I wasn't too concerned about it so I'm just trying to get most of the surface area covered with this glue this glue is kind of nearing the end of its usefulness it was almost I was almost out and it gets kind of difficult to get those last bits of glue out so you'll see me struggling with that for a few minutes here So now I'm just going to place that down onto the fabric like you saw. And so here you can see where the glue has seeped through the fabric a little bit. So, which is fine. Um, like I said, most of this is gonna get covered. So I just 
press that down really good and make sure that there weren't any air bubbles. And then I'm gonna trim the corners here so that I can wrap that fabric around. So I wasn't very neat and tidy with this. You could certainly um, try to do it a little more perfectly on your own project, but like I said, I am going to be covering most of it. So I wasn't too concerned about perfection at this point. So you kind of just wrap it like a present. So I just used the Fabri-Tac and I glued all of that down. So, and here it is completed. <laughs> I didn't think you guys needed to see me struggling with that glue for the rest of that. So I have it all wrapped. And this is the way that I'm going to be placing it. So, and I'm just seeing, showing you how I'm going to be attaching it. So this fabric is gonna go on the underside. It's going to go over the wrapped part of the spine, and then it's going to go on the inside of the book cover just like you see here. So then that these are a couple strips of sari silk that I'm going to be using to help attach on the outside of the spine. So what I ended up doing was sewing down, as you see here, one side of each of those strips of sari silk and then I attached the sari silk on the outside of the book cover whereas the other fabric was attached onto the inside of the book cover. So hopefully that makes sense and you'll see me do it and that might make it a little clearer if I'm not explaining it well. So, but here I'm just pinning down that sari silk and then I'm going to take it over to my machine and sew down each of those spots here. And, you'll, and I'll bring it back and show you what I mean in a minute. So hopefully this isn't too tedious watching me do all of these um, this pinning and, and gluing and everything. Uh, I know that sometimes with tutorials, if you go too quickly, it's, um, it's difficult to understand exactly what's going on. But um, So here I'm showing you that you could glue this down also if you wanted to. I think that sewing is makes it a little bit stronger and more secure, but if you don't have a sewing machine, um, gluing is an option. So, and I'm back. So you can see that I've sewn down the inside of each of those strips so that the outside is just loose and I can lift that up to place the cover between the two bits of fabric. So here I'll, I'll lay it all out again for you and hopefully that makes it more clear. So you can see I just lifted it up on each side. So this book that I'm using for this project, um, like I said, is um, quite an old book. And I actually purchased this from a garage sale that I went to a number of years ago. I have one other one that's identical to it, except it's from a different year. Um, and I just, I thought it was, they were really beautiful books. I, I think I paid a dollar for them. Um, but on the inside of the cover, it actually has a stamp that says discard. So they were meant to be thrown away and 
the person that I bought them from obviously rescued them and then they were they were getting rid of a whole set she had a whole bunch of them and I in retrospect I wish I had bought all of them <laughs> but at the time I wasn't doing this sort of thing and I just bought them because I thought they were really pretty and um, I had planned to just use them as a display piece but I thought that rather than just sitting on a shelf in my house it might be nice to get some use out of out of the book and so I decided to use it for this project so here you can see I'm adding glue to the spine and this is the part where you would see the seams where I wrapped it so I added the glue to that section and then I'm going to well here I'm trying to kind of smooth it out a little bit so that it doesn't seep through but that didn't work really well so <laughs> I went ahead and just eyeballed the center of this piece of fabric and then pressed that down So I actually made these, <clears throat> um, another three of these with my kids after I completed this project and they turned out pretty well. So I might show those to you in a later video if you're interested. Um, and let me know in the comments if you like seeing this type of video where I actually do some bookmaking with you guys. I'm definitely not an expert at bookmaking. It's something that um, I've only been doing for, hmm, let's see, less than two years, <laughs> a year, yeah, year and a half, I don't know, something like that. So, um, so I'm, I'm definitely a newbie, but I've really been enjoying it, and I've read some books about, about it, and um, been experimenting with it, so Hopefully this video is helpful and you guys maybe try doing this project. I really like how this turned out and so I think I will probably be doing another book like this in the future. I like using binders for some journaling just because they're so easy to use. It's so easy to add pages or take pages away if you don't like them and um, especially things like you know, obviously a planner it would be perfect for something like that. Um, but I think there's so many other uses that you can, that these are good for. Um, so I thought it was a fun project and I hope you guys enjoy watching me see it. Watching me see it. <laughs> watching me make it. <laughs> um, so here you can see I'm just measuring the sides of this binder mechanism to make sure I have it centered on the inside of the spine. And so I'm just using this IKEA catalog um, so that I can use my awl to pierce through the spine without making a hole in anything. So I just press down really hard on, on that so that it makes a mark and then I have to work that hole there and make it even larger with my awl. Now when I made the binders with my kids, I ended up using my crocodile to cut to punch those holes and that worked pretty well. But the spine that I made for this binder was too thick and I couldn't fit it into my crocodile. So you might want to keep that in mind. Um, try not to make the spine too thick if you decide to do this project because it does make it more difficult to attach the binder mechanism and also to punch the holes. So, but I did make it work and so you can see I'm just kind of working that all into the into those holes and twisting it back and forth that will help it help to widen the hole and make it larger. So once you have those holes um, sufficiently large for the screw to go through them, you can attach the binder mechanism to the inside of the spine. So here you can see 
that I am getting ready to do that. I'm showing you that I have those marked here where I'm going to be putting the screw through. And so I'm just going to line that up. So this is the flat part of the screw will go on the inside of the binder, the part that you're going to see. So, and then the other part that has the slot for your screwdriver will go on the outside of the spine, which will later be covered up. So you won't see that unless you choose not to cover it, which would be fine too. But I do cover this outside part. So here I'm using this straight slot screwdriver and I'm going to be it was, it was kind of difficult because I, because like I said, my spine was really thick and so I had a hard time making that hole large enough. So I really fiddled around with it for a while. Um, but when I made the binders with my kids, it was a lot easier because I did, I was able to punch that hole with my crocodile, which made it larger and the screw went through it much easier. and had a lot more leeway um, to, to be able to screw that into the the binder mechanism whereas here it it only went in a little way so I'm hoping that it is secure enough it seemed really secure once I had it all together so hopefully it has longevity and doesn't come apart on me but um, so far it's been it's been working well and I'm happy with it. So here I'm showing you that I've attached one of the sides and so now I'm going to go ahead and attach the other side to the spine. So and I'll try to link below um, this binder mechanism in case you would like to try this project and would like to purchase one. Um, I got mine from Amazon so but they may be available in other places also but I'll try to link the one that I purchased in the description box so if you guys are interested in doing this and um, you don't know of another place that sells these you can check that out they were not very expensive I think it was ten dollars eleven dollars maybe for a set of two so I thought that was was pretty good So I'm just, like I said, attaching the other side of the mechanism here, which it's a little more difficult to do this on camera. So I'm showing you that I got it attached and it seems pretty secure. So. I was happy with that. So once the binder mechanism is securely fastened to your spine, this is the time when I will or you will want to attach the outside cover to the spine. So again, I'm just using the Fabri-Tac to attach this. So you'll see me struggling with this glue again. <laughs> so, and I did try to get a bead of glue on the inside part of the book cover there so that it could be firmly attached. I hated to cover up any of this hand marbled paper that was on the on the cover, but wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to come apart so and I do end up using the other parts some of the other pages and things from the book um, on in as pages in this binder so I may show you guys in another video how I decorated the inside cover and um, let me know if you'd like to see um, a journal with me or something like that and see me journaling in this in this binder I was thinking I might do a video on that if that would interest you guys 
So here I'm just making sure that it's even. So you're going to want to have a gap between the cover and the spine so that your um, cover is able to close properly. So I'm just testing that out that it's being that it's closing easily and that it's even I'm trying to make that even I have put together books before and they were a little bit crooked <laughs> so it's easy to do um, so you can see I'm, I'm just pulling that silk away because I don't want it to be attached quite yet just making sure it looks even here and then now I'm going to attach the sari silk on the other side of the book and this is just going to give it some added uh, strength and hopefully keep it from coming apart. So, and the, and the blue does bleed through pretty easily with the sari silk because it is so thin. So it's pretty obvious where I've glued and I'll show you what I do to cover that up later on in the video. But for now, I'm just trying to make sure that that's all glued down really well on both sides. And then I'll add some more glue here to secure the remaining fabric to the inside of that, the cover there. I do like using this Fabri-Tac glue. It seems to be pretty strong and it does dry fairly quickly, which I like. Um, but I know that there's other glues available out there that can be just as effective. So this isn't the only glue that is, um, you know, will work for this project. So off camera, you're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and attach the other side so you don't have to watch me do that. But I basically go through the same steps um, where I make sure it's all lining up correctly and where it can close and open easily and properly. So here I have it all attached. Now as you can see, so you can see that the glue has seeped through that sari silk all along the edges there. But it turned out pretty good and I was happy with how it all came together. So now the last step is going to be so I'm showing you that I do add extra glue. You can add extra glue along there to secure that on better if you want to. So anyways, the next step that I'm going to do is to attach, reattach the spine of the original book to the outside of my binder and the way that I'm going to do this is using sari silk again I'm going to be gluing on the inside of the spine a strip of sari silk the same size as the one that I used when I attached the other spine to the book so I'm going to be gluing that on either side and then that will be glued down onto the spine of the book to secure that so that all of the binder hardware will be covered up and it will go back to kind of the original look of the book. 
So, but because the sari silk did have so much bleed through with the glue, I decided to add some fibers and yarns to it. And so that helps to cover up that bleed through. And I thought it looked really neat. I liked the look of it once it was all sewn on and put together. So that is an idea for you. Of course, you could use something else like ribbon, which would be thicker and probably wouldn't have the same bleed through problem if, if you wanted. But I really liked how this turned out with the yarns that I sewed onto the sari silk on either side. So here I'm just laying these out and seeing exactly what order I want to put them in and how I want them to look. I kind of laid them all out in straight lines here, but when I sewed them on, I, I wove them together a little more and made it look a little more organic, which I liked. So, and I'll show you how it looks in a minute. Okay, so here is what it looks like after I've sewn it all on. You can see that I left one side of it with just the sari silk because that's going to attach to the underside of the spine. And so, but I just used a, a zigzag stitch and I stitched along the edge and I went, I went down it a couple times so that all of the fibers were secured on there. And I didn't use any glue or anything like that, but you could use glue if you don't have a sewing machine and you wanted to you wanted to do that instead. I'm sure that would work. So here I'm showing you what the plan is and how it's going to look once it's all attached. So the first step is going to be to put glue on that edge of the sari silk that will be attached to the spine. Or I think I ended up, I was going to put it on the silk, but I ended up just putting it directly on the spine and that seemed to work better. So I just ran a bead of glue all along that inside edge of the spine. So I'm thinking, how, how am I attaching this? <laughs> Making sure I don't put it on upside down here. So, and then I just turn it over to make sure it it's attached in the right places and it's looking the way I want. And then I just press down with my fingers so that that is secured in place. So I know that on my previous craft with me video, I had quite a few comments that said the background music was distracting and you had a hard time hearing um, some of the things that I was saying. And um, so I considered not, not adding any music to this video, but I do tend to have lots of pauses <laughs> where I'm not actually speaking or saying anything as you're watching me do something um, if I don't feel it needs further explanation and things like that. So um, I like having the music in the background to kind of fill in those those empty <laughs> spaces. Um, so but I, I did try to turn down the volume on it so that it was much quieter and hopefully it does not um, make it difficult to hear me speaking and the instructions that I'm giving but if you do find it distracting let me know and uh, maybe I will just eliminate it altogether if I do another video like this so let me know if the music is distracting to you because I know that it was for some people in the video that I did with the pressed flower tags 
that we made together. So let me know if you would prefer music or no music. <laughs> um, so you can see I've attached the other side of the spine, sorry, silk, to the other side of the spine here. And so now it is ready to be attached to the book. So, and these little edges here, you could, I do trim them off so they're the same size. You could leave them if you like the organic look of having them kind of dangle off the edge. So, but I, I do decide to trim those off, which you can see me doing. So what I'm going to be doing after I trim these edges of the sari silk is I'm going to run a bead of glue, and you'll see me do that in a minute, um, on the underside of each of those pieces of silk and then attach it to the book and it'll look just like you see here. Um, but I thought that, as I said before, I'm going to be using this book to help me with um, memorizing and so I thought maybe it would be interesting to you guys to hear um, my kids one of the verses that we memorized recently so I'm going to go ahead and add in a recording um, this first one is of my son Gabriel he's six years old so he's going to be quoting one of the verses that we've memorized so I hope you guys enjoy that as you watch me finish up attaching the spine here. If I speak in tongues of men or angels, but do not love, made of a resounding gong or clanging cymbal, but do not love, I am nothing. If I have, if I have the gift of prophecy and fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and have faith that can move mountains, but do not love, I am nothing. If I give, I give to the poor and send my body to flames, but do not love, I gain nothing. So that was the first part of 1 Corinthians 13 that Gabriel quoted. So next I have Felicity, my second oldest daughter um, and she's going to be quoting the next section of first Corinthians 13 um, so while you watch me here attach this I'm just again pressing down the edges to make sure that that's firmly glued in place on either side here and um, as I do that I'll have you listen to her finish off the next section of that verse Do I start now? Love is patient, love is kind. Love does not envy, does not boast, keeps no records of wrongs, does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. Always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. So that was Felicity. She's, um, like I said, she's my second born daughter. She's 10 years old. Um, and so she was quoting the next section of 1 Corinthians 13. And we haven't finished memorizing to the very end of the chapter yet. So we just did um, verses 1 through 7. So here I'm adding a little extra glue to the edge of the silk so that I can make sure that that is securely attached and you can see that the fibers and the yarns that I put on the edge can cover up most of the bleed through that happens with the silk. There is a little bit that peeks out but that really doesn't bother me too much. It's kind of the look I'm going for is that aged, stained, distressed look. So here I'm showing you the edges how um, because the spine is curved you can see that there's a cavity there between the old spine, the original spine, and the spine that we made to attach the binder mechanism to. Um, so the last thing that I'm going to be doing is attaching this brass 
book plate to the front and I'm going to again use my IKEA catalog to go behind the book so that I can pierce the holes on either side of that plate with my awl. So the next thing I do is just make sure that I have this plate in the right place on the book and I wasn't sure if I wanted to center it on the marbled paper or center it on the um, cover itself but I decided to center it on the marbled section of the cover and so you can see I'm measuring it here and then I'll go ahead and use my awl to pierce right where the holes are for that brass plate and then once that's finished I will get some brads which you'll see here this is one of the brads that I'm going to use to attach it and these I believe were from Tim Holtz if I'm not mistaken I think that's where I got them or it was the Hobby Lobby version of the Tim Holtz I can't sometimes I get that too so but anyways um so I just put the brad through the hole on the brass plate and then it also goes through the cover of the book and I'm just making sure that that's lined up and I like how it looks and then I am also going to add a bead of glue around the bottom of the plate and the two sides not at the top because that's where you're going to be where I'm going to be you know inserting a title or name or whatever I decide to put on this book. So here you can see I'm just adding the glue around those three sides and this just helps it helps to prevent it from wiggling and wobbling around on the cover. So and then the brads will give it extra security so that it doesn't easily come off of the front there. So now I'm just putting those brads back into the holes and then feeding those through the two holes that I made in the cover of the book. So, and you do need to be careful that you don't set it onto the cover until it's in the right position because if you get glue, this glue does tend to lift off paint. <laughs> so, especially with old paper like this, you have to be, I, was trying to be careful not to not to get the glue all over the place so and then I just fold back the I don't know what you call those <laughs> the inside part <laughs> of the brad the little prongs so I fold those down on the inside and then it's pretty secure at this point so and then I do end up covering up the, the prongs of the brad later on when I decorate the inside cover, which again, I may show you what I did in, an, in another video. Um, but here's a final look at the book. And while I'm showing you this, I'm going to go ahead and put a recording of my daughter. She, my oldest daughter, she just turned 12. Um, she's going to be quoting a part of a poem by Friedrich Lehman. So I hope you enjoy that and if you like this video give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this and I will see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. Now could we even think the oceans fill and where the skies Parchment made where every stock on earth and quill and every man a scribe betrayed to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole of those stretched from sky to sky. Okay.